Good evening, everyone. Uh, very warm, warm welcome to all of you, and thank, thank you for taking out time out of your busy schedules to be with us today. Um, we are gathered here to commemorate the life of Professor Shamnath Bashir, a life truly well lived. Um, although he was best known as a legal academic and for his contribution to the legal field as a founder of IDIA and Spicy IP, to most of us, he was much more than that. He was a terrific mentor, a great friend, and a leader for all of us. We would like um, to start the event today um, by having a performance by one of our IDIA scholars, Dipin. He's a fifth year law student at uh, WIPS um, IP University, and he'll be singing Lost Boy by Greg Holden. Um, and before that, I would like to request you all to put your phones either on silent or turn it off. Thank you. My home still a child I walked a thousand sort of miles To wait for my father To gather up his tools He said, my boy, you gotta run Don't wait for me, don't wait for mom We'll come get you When it's safe for us to move So I waited many years Held back the pain behind my tears For my father Come find me like he said At that time I was alone So many years without a home I made brothers of a different kind instead And at the time I didn't know Just how hard the wind could blow Towards disaster and the things that I may see I never found my father I never found my mother Even though in a lifetime I will be A hero to the masses To those born without chances There's a freedom that everyone deserves I know there's greed and there's corruption I've seen death and mass destruction But I'm telling you that I'll be whole I will not be commanded I will not be controlled I will not let my future go on Without the help of my soul I will not be commanded I will not be controlled I will not let my future go on Without the help of my soul Thank you. Thank you. Um, now we have a few people who'd like to share some memories and some instances they've had in their lives with uh, Shamnath. Um, first of all, we'd like to invite uh, Professor M.P. Singh to say a few words. Um, he's also the trustee at IDIA. Yeah, it seems I am the oldest person here in the amongst all of you. <clears throat> so maybe elders should be given respect, therefore you have asked me to speak first. But uh, also for the reason, of course, there must have been many of you who may have known Shamnath for longer years, as well as 
perhaps more closely. Uh, but uh, my relationship, which ordinarily should have started at professional uh, level, uh, developed into uh, a brotherly and friendly relationship. He used to visit not only me, but also my wife very frequently and uh, always called her auntie. Uh, so, uh, and a uh, uh, few days before uh, what happened at the end, he had uh, written that uh, I am thinking coming soon to Delhi and uh, stay with both of you for some time. Uh, but uh, that was not to happen because then came another mail and I think that must have been the last mail from him where he said that anything may happen to me now uh, because I vomited blood once again today and maybe that was the last day also uh, though the news later on came several days after. I had no idea who Shamnad is until uh, at NUGS, uh, this position of chair of uh, intellectual property by the ministry was created. And uh, we were looking for someone who could hold the chair and was competent to hold the chair. And then I asked Professor Gopal Krishnan uh, at uh, um, now he was at that time in uh, Gandhi University at Cochin, uh, where I, he was also a member of the Academic Council of uh, NUJS. He gave me two names and one of them was Shamnad. I wrote to both of them uh, and as usual, I uh, wrote just few words that Shamnad uh, your name has been suggested to me by someone and if you are interested, please let me know. I will like to talk to you. And uh, immediately came his uh, response that, uh, yes, I would like to consider. So then we fixed a date to meet in Delhi. I came here and uh, we sat somewhere in Connaught Place in a small restaurant, had a cup of tea, and there we discussed that what we want. He said, uh, but I don't have much teaching experience and certain other limitations. I said, that is not uh, a big issue. If you are interested and uh, you think you would be able to uh, give leadership to that chair, then we, we can overcome all other difficulties. And uh, it so happened also. He said, okay, I'll come. Uh, then I asked him that whether he could give a presentation uh, before we uh, decide. He said, sure, I can come and we'll give the <clears throat> presentation also. Incidentally, in the presentation when he came, Justice Rumapal was also present. She was uh, actually human rights chair professor there for some time. And incidentally, she was present on that day. And uh, she was so much impressed that after Shamnath finished, uh, she said, are you sure this person will agree to come to a new JS? I said, he is uh, letting me know that he would be interested in coming. I, I can't say much about it. Then he said, he's so good, he's too good for NUJS and therefore I'm not sure whether he will come. But if he agrees to come, please take him. So <coughs> on her assurance, immediately I issued a letter. Shamnad decide when will you like to join us? And he also did not take much time in deciding. And very soon he came and joined as sometimes I think around this time, September, end or October, uh, he joined 
and New Jersey in 2008. And uh, uh, then uh, within a few days, uh, we gave him a place to stay in the campus, on the campus of the university. Uh, to begin with, with uh, if another teacher uh, in the, uh, who was warden of one of the hostels, but then an independent place for him. And uh, to my surprise, within a few days, I, I didn't know that the students knew him before because of his writings and uh, their interest in IP law. <clears throat> so his arrival immediately uh, had a magic effect uh, so far as the students were concerned. But it was not only students, the administration, the person, the guards, everybody uh, started telling me, uh, sir, this professor is a special person you have brought here. I said, in what respect? He said, he is here all the time around, uh, uh, even in, uh, during the night at three o'clock, four o'clock, he is working in his office. And uh, that has made a difference because otherwise this building used to become dead after seven o'clock. Nobody would enter the building, and generally there was a rumor that a, a lady in a red sari comes here <laughs> in the night, <laughs> and she <laughs> perhaps threatens people <laughs> uh, or whatever. And uh, this, uh, uh, he said that <laughs> I, I decided that let me find out what, which that who this lady is. And uh, uh, Shamnath said, but never the lady came. Uh, it never happened. But uh, uh, this was the impact on everyone there. And uh, really, the environment became suddenly very different. A friendly, uh, open mind students and his uh, uh, acquaintance not only with the uh, colleagues, but also with the students, that was much more remarkable. And everywhere, uh, everybody started coming to him for anything, whether the students or the karamcharis, for anything that uh, they should have normally said to me, they started uh, telling him. And he was finding solutions, so my work was also uh, greatly divided. He took the responsibility of doing that also. And slowly we saw that uh, several colleagues there, and that is what actually changed a new JS, that several colleagues were there who were both uh, good uh, uh, human beings as well as very uh, deep intellectuals, that is, in matters of law and life otherwise also. Shamnath, for example, was not merely a a person who knew about law or IP, but he was also an extraordinary person in other respects also. And that is how the university's character actually changed. It was not because of me. It was because of these colleagues that the university changed. If anything uh, may be attributed to me is that I could attract these people uh, or I could actually request them to come and join us. And they came and joined. Now, Shamnath actually uh, was doing very well. He stayed for some time in the university accommodation. Uh, and uh, until then, he was quite OK, doing well. Uh, of course, the same way as he used to work uh, day and night, uh, but never complained. Then. Suddenly, he decided to change the uh, place from the university. He said, uh, I'm disturbed quite a bit here, so better I would rather take a place somewhere beyond the university. And then he moved out of the university. And uh, soon after, I think within a few months, he started complaining that uh, I'm not sleeping well. Uh, I have sometimes fever sometimes pain in the body, something is happening. 
I said, why don't you come back to the university campus if that is the... He said, no, no, it is not the effect of the place because the place and the temperature, everything in Calcutta is similar as in um, Kerala. And therefore, it's not because of that, but there is something wrong with me. Maybe my work habits, I said, uh, that is that may be the reason that your work habits are uh, perhaps with the age, uh, they require to be changed. But uh, he didn't care. He continued to work the way he worked. Uh, we used to discuss quite a few things. One of them was that uh, after Naj Foundation was decided uh, by uh, Delhi High Court, uh, of course, uh, there were many supporters of that decision. I was the only one who was critical of that decision <coughs> in the law school <laughs> also. And uh, so I asked students, because we had started a journal there, that uh, this is an important case. Let us all write on it something or the other. And if you want to invite outsiders, you may invite outsiders also, but we should. So among them, I was the only one who was critical of that decision in the sense that constitutionally it is wrongly decided because there are larger court decisions which go against it. And therefore, the high court could not do something which uh, went against the decision of the Supreme Court. <clears throat> but uh, I was taken generally by the people that I was against the idea of uh, liberty of homosexuality. And uh, therefore I am criticizing. So they thought I am perhaps a disciple of Baba Ramdev or <laughs> I could be associated with BJP. <laughs> so, <coughs> uh, which uh, I have never been. So uh, I said, no, no, that is not the idea, but constitutionally I think that uh, uh, it is uh, uh, wrongly decided by the court. Okay, most people uh, uh, disagreed with me and it is in that, uh, uh, mel melancholic uh, 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 atmosphere that uh, I used to discuss sometime with uh, Shamnad. Shamnad, uh, the students here are interested in things which are not the common issues of the common man in this country. They are very bright, but uh, they come with the ideas, sir, do, uh, we want to do research on right to commit suicide. I used to tell them why you are so much worried about right to commit suicide. People don't get even basic health facilities here. Let us also have hospitals for committing suicide. Uh, whether that is justified, why don't you take issues which are relevant to the society? But they thought that these are the issues which are being discussed in Western societies. Why not here also in India? So I said uh, they, our persons coming from uh, good families and therefore they can afford to talk about those issues and ignoring the issues relating to common men. And it is around that time that uh, yeah, Diwali came and uh, in one of the newspapers in Calcutta it appeared that there are some areas in uh, Orissa uh, in the uh, tribal uh, belt where people have never s seen light during night. Means uh, light for them during night uh, is something strange because they had no way by which they could have light during night. While the country on the one side is uh, celebrating Diwali and is spending so much money also on crackers and other things. Uh, these people have never seen light during the night. I said, uh, uh, Shimana, there are people of this type also. Have you read this uh, news uh, report? He said, yes, I have also seen. 
So can we utilize our energies for doing something for such people also? And it is in that that he said, yes, yes, we can use the energies of these students for bringing some students from the weaker sections of the society also in these law schools. So our energies will be utilized better for the purpose not only of the one section of the society, but for all sections of the society, we can bring people. Uh, this was really a practical idea for a law school, what we could actually do for the uh, students and for the society. And uh, he started actually talking to the students. Along with that, he also started going to Sundarbans as well as to the hills in Sikkim and other places and talk to the principals in the school and to the students also that why don't they come to the law schools and it, uh, that we will give you free uh, tuition for preparation of the test. You take the test and if you are selected, we will take care of your education also. And so initially, uh, I think it must have been uh, in the year 2010 when uh, some students from Sundarban actually agreed uh, to come. They stayed in the uh, hostels uh, uh, at the university. The students actually trained them and some of them were selected in the very first instance also. One of them was our driver's uh, uh, nephew who is now practicing in uh, Delhi uh, after having done his LLB from uh, Patiala. So this kind of, uh, these kinds of students started coming. And then it is within that that he developed it in the form of uh, initially uh, uh, of a trust which was not uh, registered for some time the issue was from where the money will come. Uh, I contributed uh, something to begin with. I said, uh, you, uh, I will pay some money for it to begin with. So let us start. And then Shamnath said, but let us have something, some institution into which people may send money. And so he decided to constitute a trust which was actually constituted, I think, again towards the end of 2011, before I left uh, uh, NUJS. And uh, that is how the uh, IDIA as a trust was established. Initially, we were three persons. Uh, it was again Shamnath's idea that uh, uh, him, uh, and two of us, me and uh, uh, Justice uh, Pal, would be there. And then finally, he brought Shishira. He said that someone who will help him in working must also be there because we were not going to help him in any way. So uh, <coughs> he brought Shishira. And I am very happy that his idea of bringing Shishira was really a very practical and wise idea because now we have a person uh, who can, who knows how idea functions, who are the persons who are actually supporting it uh, in terms of uh, uh, funding as well as in terms of ideas and therefore Shishra uh, would be the person to take care of it now so far as myself and uh, Rumapal are uh, concerned. Uh, it is now for three of us to decide uh, whether we would like to have one more trustee. Uh, that is, again, Shishra will have to find out who would be the most appropriate person to work with him. And uh, so a heavy burden on Shishra, but I hope he is fully trained for that purpose uh, and uh, he will do the job very well. Uh, Shamnath's health actually, uh, then I left 
in 2011, uh, in early, early December, and uh, returned to Delhi. I invited him once uh, to the National Judi uh, sorry, Delhi Judicial Academy, where I was working as uh, chairperson for two years. And uh, until then also, he was looking not so bad in health. Of course, he had reduced a lot of weight, but still he was looking well and gave a uh, very uh, good uh, lecture to the judges uh, here. They were very highly impressed by the way he explained some of the issues relating to patent laws. Uh, so uh, Shamnad actually, and then he continued to work and came that famous Infosys uh, prize also um, uh, to him, which uh, people get uh, exceptionally. Uh, and uh, we were very happy that uh, he got it. But uh, it is at that time that uh, after several years, I saw his photograph. And uh, there I found him very weak, very thin. And uh, it was a matter of worry. In between, we had not met until he decided to have the IDIA function at uh, NLU Delhi, which I had joined in the meantime and where he arrived. Uh, then uh, uh, first uh, uh, he was among few persons talking to them. I had difficulty even in recognizing him because he had lost so much weight and had become so weak and uh, short also. I Means he was a tall person, uh, taller than me, but uh, suddenly he had become very short also. And uh, I was so... Uh, uh, actually worried that what happened to him. But he said, I am okay. The only thing is that uh, uh, I am losing weight and some pain in the body and all that. And then he came home and uh, for some time he was with us. We also had dinner once and uh, said, uh, now I will come and stay with you for some time because auntie's uh, Chapatis are, have been very helpful to me, and therefore I will stay with you for some time. Maybe I will recover my health and all that. But it never happened. He was so busy with too many, engaged in too many things that he could never come. Uh, now, these are some of the things which I have just mentioned, but uh, more important things you know about him, the way he uh, argued cases in the uh, uh, Supreme Court, basically Novartis case, and then some cases in Madras High Court relating to the constitution of certain uh, boards, which were supposed to be judicial boards, but without there being a legal person, those boards were functioning. And uh, the court actually invalidated that kind of arrangement. Uh, towards the end, he also came up with the idea that the uh, uh, university law professors should also have the right to practice in the courts. Uh, the idea may not be bad, but my experience of Delhi University, and I think uh, Professor Bakshi also shared that, uh, was that even our good teachers who were doing very well in teaching and research, they were all attracted by the idea of going to the courts. And without earning much by going there, they lost track of their academic life also. Uh, they stopped teaching also in the university and uh, were not so eff effective and uh, were not available even for discussions amongst ourselves. Uh, because they were every day sitting in Tisajari or somewhere, not necessarily in the Supreme Court bar or uh, High Court bar, but mostly in the lower courts, uh, spending their time, getting tired by the time they will come to the classes unprepared and all that. So we realized that uh, that was not a good idea so far as our country is concerned. It may be a good idea in other countries, but not here. And so I said, Shamnad, don't ask me at least uh, 
to sign this document because I had not only opposed in Delhi University, actually I got a suit filed by uh, Rajkumar, who is the Vice Chancellor of uh, Jindal University, and another student uh, uh, who was actually again uh, uh, senior to Shyam, uh, Rajkumar and uh, also practicing in the court. They successfully filed the petition and the practice was stopped in Delhi University. People actually were very unhappy so far as I was concerned. I became actually an enemy of my own colleagues they, because I, I stopped them from going to the court. Now, when Rajkumar and that uh, Anis both are uh, working and they are alive, if I sign a document which requires people to uh, come again for practice, that, was be, that would be totally immoral on my part, and therefore I said, Shamnad, I can't do it. Even Justice Romapal asked me, why are you opposing it? I said, I'm not opposing it, but don't ask me to sign it. And that would not be possible so far as I am concerned. So apart from this minor, towards the end, difference of opinion, actually there was no time when there was any kind of unhappiness or indifference, uh, a difference between me and uh, uh, Shamnath. And therefore, that is what, uh, when on 8th of August, a friend was sitting uh, with me talking, but he was very particular about looking to the every tone in his phone. And he said, after opening uh, the, after looking into the phone, Shamnath is no more. <coughs> and uh, uh, I did not show certain surprise to him for the simple reason that Shamnath had written to me few days back that uh, uh, it seems that he may not uh, be there for too long. Uh, but then after that friend uh, left, suddenly somewhere uh, these lines of, if uh, you have seen uh, the film Three Idiots, towards the end there is a song in that film and uh, that started coming to my mind. Bhati hawa sa tha wo, udti patang sa tha wo, kaha gaya se dhundo. Chhu kar hamare dil ko, kaha gaya usse dhundo. Thank you. I, I hope we will take up his life and motives and forward and see that through IDIA project, change in the society and change in our young minds will happen. I hope you will definitely do that. That would be the greatest service to Shamnath and to his memory. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Singh. Um, I would like to call upon Mr. Keshav Dhakar, General Counsel at Microsoft and Shamnath's classmate to say a few words. Thank you. Uh, good evening. With a very heavy heart, uh, I just feel very privileged uh, and honored to be here and speak about my brother, Shabnad. And uh, it's a loss which will probably never heal for all of us here. But I've had my own personal journey with uh, Shabnad, and that was in 1999. I had uh, just graduated, 
uh, from University of Delhi. And of course, that's how I remember Professor Singh at Campus Law. And uh, within a few months, uh, Shamnath had joined the firm Anand and Anand. And of course, uh, I didn't know him before that. We were just very junior lawyers. And there he was, uh, very smart, handsome, uh, very articulate, very confident in his demeanor. And here I was, <clears throat> quite lacking confidence, uh, first year of, of my job in the field of intellectual property. And then first generation lawyer from the family. So I had all the insecurities uh, that, I, that I had. And uh, there Shamnath came with a completely different sense of vibrancy and his sense of humor, his sense of articulation. And I used to admire him a lot. <clears throat> And um, as he navigated his way through the law firm, learning, we were just, we were just so junior in that firm that we started to kind of become closer in terms of how much I used to learn from him and how much he used to learn from my work ethics because I used to just keep my head down, get the work done, and ensure that our clients were happy. And soon enough, that friendship became pretty strong that when the firm opened an office in Gurgaon, in 2000, uh, Shamnath and I decided to live together. And just go 20 years back, uh, and you start, if you know what Gurgaon looked like, it was quite barren. It was so empty. Few buildings were built, and that's where Anand and Anand decided to open an office. And lo and behold, he sent the juniors there. Mr. Praveen Anand said, you know, who would go and, and live in Gurgaon? And we were the first targets, and we said, let's live together. And it was amazing at that time. Uh, of course, we were on super low salaries, both me and Shamnath. We were like hands to mouth. And my father had pity on me. I said, uh, Dad, I had to kind of, you know, I'm living in, in this town called Gurgaon. And I have to really drive. And I have to sometime drive to Delhi High Court because we both were in litigation team. And he had pity on me. He gave me this old Fiat of his, uh, right? No air conditioning. It was just a small fan. And me and Shunath would wake up every morning and we would drive that Fiat to office uh, at Meruli Gurgaon Road. And you know, it would break down almost every second, third day. And poor Shunath, that handsome you know, kind of guy, and he would be pushing my Fiat every morning and uh, it would be foggy. It, we would see Neil guy in the, on those roads and, uh, and he would really curse my Fiat. He said, uh, why do you get this Fiat? you know, it's no good, let's, let's get a bike. <clears throat> and I was like off bike because I have to get court files and all. I said, I can't do with bike. But you know, he really cherished our time together so much so at one point he, he stopped going back to the flat that we had. He said, that's enough. You know, I'm gonna probably sleep in the reception and he used to carry his, his, his uh, toothbrush, and his toothpaste. He was, he was working super hard. I mean, I would leave the firm at 11 p.m. in the night. He would, he would say, no, I have more work to do. And sometimes we would just sleep in the firm itself and I would go back home and come back. And we would discuss so many things when we were together. Of course, uh, you know, included life, included uh, Mr. Anand, it included uh, a lot of the firm politics to, uh, you know, the girls in his life. <laughs> you know, he had a lot and I was like really envious. <laughs> and uh, my part was mostly about, uh, you know, my wife Richa because we were a couple then. And she was in UK studying. So I didn't have much liberty to talk many girls, but he had like, he, he was sharing his life to me. It's like, you know, he talked about diversity. You should, you should see his, uh, you know, love life. Uh, the, so it was, so to see him working on his abs in the morning, and here I was thinking of, uh, I need to send this draft and I need to file that lawsuit and I need to get some opinion out. He was just working on his body. So. It was just amazing uh, that the bond that we had, then I, you know, uh, I was hungry because I could just see him and I get inspired by him because he, had, he was full of knowledge. He was full of, uh, I would say, the competency that he had. He was, he was like ahead of his uh, you know, times in terms of the lawyering that he bought. Uh, and I was like craving for that skill. So I said, I need to go to US, I need to study again. Uh, I don't think I've been, I've been trained to be a practicing lawyer. I have been, I'm a good student, but, so he completely supported my decision and he said, don't even think twice, just go and you will see the world open up for you. 
Uh, so I went to US, he continued here, then he went to Oxford himself. Uh, we kept in touch and he always, always kept a track of my, uh, my career progression. I mean, he was so concerned, not concerned in the sense he was just so kind of, uh, he felt that he needs to check on me as to what's happening. So when I did my bar, then I started working, when I came back in 2004 to India, uh, all the time he was just checking. He even came to see me in US. I was living a student's life, you know, sharing two room with four students. And he made sure that uh, he came and, and checked in to what's happening. How are you doing? And how, you know, who are your friends? Who are you living with? And stuff. So of course, then I got married. My wife, Richa, is here in the room. And uh, he was absolutely fond of her. So much so when our kid was born in 2008, Shreyansh, um, I said, Shamnad, you need to be the godfather to my son. And Shamnad said, that is the single most amazing thing that I've ever, been, I've ever received, to be a godfather to a child. And he, over the years, whenever he used to engage Shamnad, uh, my, my son Shreyansh, the kind of conversation they both would have, as a father I would not have with my son. I don't know, it just, it just uh, you know, the, the connection was just, just amazing. And he taught me as a father, I'm a very considerate father, I want to listen to my kids and I want to learn from them so I can be a better human being. And he taught me because there's a photo, when he came to, to visit us in Singapore, we were working there for six years. Uh, of course, by the time he was so frail and uh, you know, we used to feel really, really, it used to pain us. Uh, they both just, just chatting with each other. The photo of them just you know, putting their head on the dining table and they were just chatting. And he taught me in that, those moments that never question a child's question. He says, you don't know what the child is thinking, the nurturing that the child is having in his mind. You may think, what a stupid question. That's such a silly thought. I think child should have more intelligence. He says, and he knew. He knew, I mean, he was not a parent, but he knew how to connect with children. And you knew what they would go through, uh, you know, as what is growing up looks like for them, right? From what where we do it. So he he encouraged me to uh, be very receptive to our own children when they start to express themselves. And he he asked me to just slow down in my you know becoming a father. Uh, and and uh, uh, there there was the journey that, that that he had following. I mean, which I mean, even I remember the arguments that we used to have. Some of them would use his decisions on the girls that I would really question because he missed many opportunities to settle down. I mean, uh, he had some really great uh, you know, women who came in his life, very, very caring, but his focus on social cause, social impact, and nothing should come in his way in fulfilling that was just immense. And he said, I care about everybody. I think I can be very successful in many things but I'm meant for something else. My calling is something very different. And he would not fully express sometimes, you know, in a, in a very homely setting, but we knew he was looking for something greater and then we all know what, what he has done. So when I think of Shrimad, I think of him as, as someone who, who cared so deeply about everybody. In fact, I was so, I mean, I was just amazed by the amount of people he had touched. For, for me and him, it was more of a personal connection. He used to talk about the river behind his, his house in um, Kuluputuza, his, his village, uh, 60 kilometers of Tiruvanthapuram. And some of us went, uh, you know, in tears to that village to, for the funeral. And I had Amit, my dear friend here, Shai Krishna and Mr. Anand, we all were there together. Monica was there. And he used to speak when I was, you know, we were living together. And I said, that, that, that river, you really, really, I drew inspiration from the river. It was as a child, uh, you know, living in that village. You know, he used to talk about the pride he had and the swimming he used to do there. And I went there uh, uh, to see after the funeral. The river was flowing with with that speed and it was really roaring. It was, it had, it had this life which, you know, you, you think of Shamnad and you say, this is where I'm sure he do inspiration uh, from. It was God's own country in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, his, in his house. Uh, it was of course heartbreaking to see his body there. 
you know, it's it's a moment I don't want to recall. Uh, but to see where he grew up and to see, you know, the the mosque uh, that he used to probably visit was was just heartening. Um, and I have that picture uh, of, of the river, which uh, I really want to just remember him from there as to the full of life, the life he, he actually sh kind of enabled all of us to live. Think of better. Uh, he, would, he would just ch cherish every decision that, that I would make, and he would make sure that he calls it out, uh, and he makes sure that he makes it a point to convey that the decision you've taken is a good one, right? And never, never uh, uh, regret. Uh, so much so when I was you know, called back to India and to lead this role at Microsoft, he was the most elated person to see. And he would even comment, oh, I remember, remember Keshav, he would tell my wife that you used to live in one room apart, one room, it's not an apartment, one room as a student and as a lawyer in Indra Vihar in North Delhi, uh, you know, to the life you have built. Uh, he would just feel uh, so, so, I mean, he, it, was, it was as if it was his own accomplishment. We met, Richai and I met him in, we took a trip to, to Bangalore just to meet him. Because his, his frail body, his, you know, how can I say the, the pain that he was going through? He would carry three bags. How many of you remember him carrying three bags whenever you would meet him? One had his food, one had his some special clothing, one had his books or something. He came with those three bags with probably just 40 kgs of, a, you know, of weight, and he, he took us to this restaurant called Sly Granny. You see, I mean, uh, the, his sense of humor. Uh, he said, no, that's my favorite restaurant, Sly. I said, I mean, what's with this name, Sly Granny? You know, he said, no, 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 don't worry. So we were asking him to come to a hotel. He just didn't listen. He said, no, you have to come to this restaurant. So me and Richard went there, and he exactly knew what to order, uh, and he just, he didn't even let us think. Um, and there he was, uh, you know, catching up. It was just, I think, divine that we thought of going and meeting because we didn't know what was coming. But the pain that we saw him, and he, he would smile at you, and he would talk to you, he would engage you, despite, you know, the weight he carried as if the weight of the world is on him, and he needs to change. He needs to change. He needs to be transformative. Uh, he needs to think of lives uh, Right, was was just uh, too much on his shoulders. But he never regretted. He never said. He says he was, he had so much accomplishment as Professor Singh, obviously you know spoke about it, but he never regretted, and he never expressed his pain other than the fact that I'm struggling with funds, I need more support. Even the argument that I had Professor Singh on is Calcutta. I said Calcutta is killing you. Come back. He says no, I will not. It's fine. I said, no, something has happened to you in Calcutta, water or something, or something is not suiting you, the air or, or something, because it was just making him sick again and again. Every time you would call him and say, how are you doing? Oh, I'm not feeling good. I'm sick. Of course, Professor, I remember his, his decision to move, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, and the impact he had on NGOs. He was just feeling uh, so empowered by the students and the love and affection he got. Uh, but he would not, he didn't budge other than the other compulsions he had. So, you know, the causes that he's taken are truly ahead of our times. The diversity that he speaks about, diversity uh, that idea is all based on. Today, corporations, global corporations are discussing diversity and inclusiveness as core part of driving innovation and succeeding forward. And companies who are not diverse, who are not inclusive in their culture or in their value system, which Satya you know, really you know, kind of embosses as his, as his leadership. And I see some Shannath thinking well ahead of his times. He says increasing diversity by increasing excess was truly, truly transformative. So when we think of <clears throat> him and remember him, I think it is for us to think that he left an unfinished a task upon all of us. I mean, I think he's been relieved of the pain that he was going through. In fact, he was almost having an out-of-body experience because I have no idea why, what was he doing in that cave? 
what was the need for him to be in that cave and, and go hungry and meditate. He was having an out-of-body experience altogether. In fact, body was simply carrying him. He had reached a different dimension. He had reached a very different level of, I would say, enlightenment that his perspective on life, perspective on people, perspective on, on ability to make anybody successful was so powerful um, that we will never be able to achieve that sense of commitment that he bought uh, to the to idea and every other accomplishment that he had. So I'd like to just end by saying that I owe a lot to him and all of you have, have been touched by him. That when he, when I saw him being lowered to the ground behind the mosque, I think he already said to all of us in different ways that what I've started, we need to continue forward. The kind of causes that he has taken before Supreme Court and otherwise, right? And he would argue, he would not settle down, he would not compromise. Even the argument, the biggest argument I've ever had was on, on computer per se patents. Professor, uh, you referred to that, uh, are computers per se, computer software per se, uh, patentable? Massive argument, because I was, of course, I was acting as an IP owner, and here he was trying to bring the balance. But I saw the relentlessness in him in pursuing the idea, and, I, and he learned something also, the way sometimes he would be so hardcore about things that he would try and be very curious about you know, uh, things around him so he's not, he's not getting completely uh, taken over by his own ideals. So when you think of this whole idea, I think we have an opportunity to take this to the next level because he left without feeling fully satisfied while he gave us all this thought that this is a proven model. This is what he would tell me. This is a proven model of success. I have demonstrated again and again that when you increase diversity you, you, by excess, anybody can be successful, but why am I not getting enough support? And I think all of us need to think really about it. We are all accomplished. We've got a lot of resources that are, we have a lot of great network that we need to continue uh, to build idea to even greater heights. Uh, why 30 students? Why 15 students? This could even be bigger. So let me just say, you know, big thanks. But before that, I say he finished one task that he was telling me because uh, my wife, Richa, she's an author now. She's written a book, Art of Legal Writing. And Shannath wrote a forward to her, to that book which he was so focused upon. I said, I need to finish this. I need to finish this. And he spoke to me a couple of days before we met him. I need to finish that forward. Otherwise, uh, I'll not feel good. And I, before I meet Richa, I have to finish it. Uh, I will not show my face to her. And just by divine uh, you know, uh, blessing that he finished that forward, beautifully written, beautifully expressing you know, uh, where the profession is going and what lawyers need to learn about just writing, expressing, communication. And just beautiful, you know, Richard just read out to me in the car that I was trying to just read out to me what he wrote about it. It's just, just I mean, the way he used to think is, is far ahead of us. So uh, as we remember and we cherish his legacy, and I urge and I call upon all of you to do whatever you can, little, small, big, to carry his work forward. So this, and participate in his events. I have regretted myself when I skipped a couple of his events. Uh, not anymore. Shunmad, you may live in peace. That, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thakkar. Uh, the next speaker is Mr. Gautam Saha, a partner at AZB Partners and an old friend of Shamnad. Hi, everyone. So as lawyers, you know, we are trained to just get up and speak uh, extempore and, you know, whatever comes to our mind. But I think 
today uh, that's probably a task or a bridge too far so i'm just with your permission just going to read out from a prepared script so over the last month or so we've seen a tremendous outpouring of grief and tributes for shamnad and it certainly dwarfs the one which cruelly took him away from us far too early and in many of these messages shamnad has been described as a great soul and you know people have talked about uh, all the great things which he did but in these times i wonder how does one truly define and measure you know his greatness i mean he's touched so many people but how does how how did he touch me and in shamnath's case you know his greatness was all about the so many idi scholars he worked with uh, so many of their families he worked with uh the students he mentored uh the legal causes ip constitutional otherwise he championed and on and on and on i mean the list is endless uh, people have come and spoken about it before me and have written about it in the last month and the common thread in all of this was that all of these causes all of these uh, uh people at some level there was an obviousness about the fact that yes they needed help or they needed uh, to be mentored or these causes needed to be championed but i feel what he did goes far beyond that i mean there were there is a huge number of people and i think most of us sitting in this room included uh who probably are not the most obvious uh candidates for needing help or uh you know needing support but i think you know i count myself i count my batchmates uh, hundreds of law school alumni idi volunteers professional colleagues who he helped and touched in many ways and again i'm not i'm sure i'm not alone in uh, saying this or feeling this but as a corporate lawyer uh, there are times where you really think about what is it that you are really doing i mean is there any meaningful impact of what you do in your day job and that thought can get quite unbearable at times however in the last 6 to 7 years you know at many of these uh, self searching moments some solace was found just by association with shamnath and all the causes he champions specifically idi and like many others uh, madhurima and me madhurima my wife we tried to do a bit for idi and yes i mean we did it because we obviously knew that it would help the cause and we wanted to help the cause but i think in my heart i knew that ultimately i was doing it for myself and it made me feel better about myself about my day job about the life i was leading and you know as they say there is no such thing as a selfless good deed and i think shamnath never had to cajole uh, plead or guilt us into doing any of these things we did it because of the unshakable trust he inspired in us uh, there was a, a sense of obviousness in the belief that he will do the right thing and therefore vicariously we will end up doing the right thing and i think this is where for me Sh- shamnath's greatness that he helped so many of us lead a far better version of the lives we were leading and i think this is what we need to start uh, continue doing not just because we owe it to shamnad not because idia may need it but i think we owe it to ourselves because i think we need it and in all this talk of greatness uh, you know it's almost easy to forget that for many of us he was just another classmate and an old friend someone you had known for 25 years uh, right from the first day we landed up from all parts of the country to law school as teenagers and without having a clue of what's going to happen for the next 5 years or for the life after that someone you shared one of the most defining periods of your lives uh with all the insecurities which go through from law school many of you know the batchmates are sitting here and i'm sure they feel the same way and the la- e- few evenings we spent over the last few years were frankly very rarely about all the great things he was doing i mean it was at the end of the day just hanging out with a old friend 
exchanging embarrassing stories, uh, hopeless and failed romantic endeavors, or mostly in my case, as someone said, uh, he didn't have that problem at all. Um, I, in fact, I sp <laughs> coincidentally also, saw, other than the five years in law school, I also spent, shared the same year while he was in Oxford and the stories continued there as well. Every once in a while, we would meet at a pub and uh, you know, have a couple of beers. And uh, you know, me and another friend of, another classmate of us, Sunil, he was in the same year in Oxford. And we would both be listening and looking at him like saying, you know, Shamnad saying, OK, you know, this uh, last weekend I did this. And last, the weekend before that, I went out with this. And these are all classmates. We you know, would be sitting in the same. Uh, the uh, Delhi, uh, sorry, the Oxford Law Faculty. Uh, I, I think you know, you know Aman is here as well. He was in the same year, and we would all be like, okay, you know, we are not living in the same planet here. So, <laughs> so anyway, the last time he came over, you know, he and Modhu uh, again spent two, uh, almost two hours, trying to outdo each other of who has a better tea collection, and so that's that's what Shamnad was all about. And I think the great Shamnad will always be with us, uh, hopefully inspiring us to do great things and continue his good work. But I think the friend Shamnad is what I will miss and many of us will miss. So may he rest in peace. Thank you, Mr. Saha. Um, I would li now like to call upon Mr. Dhruv Anand, partner at Anand Anand, to say a few words. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I won't be long, uh, uh, but I thank uh, uh, Shishira and Svetlana for inviting me uh, just to share a few thoughts of my uh, memories with Shamnath. Um, uh, Mr. Praveen Anand uh, regrets not being here. He was invited. Uh, he's overseas, uh, but um, uh, it's only till recently that he you know, get, gathered the courage to speak about Shamnath. Uh, he was emotionally uh, very, very di distressed. Um, and only till recently, till last week, uh, you know, till we organized something for him in office that he spoke. Um, uh, first of all, um, you know, I'll just uh, congratulate IDEA for, you know, the lovely things that they're doing so compassionately um, and all the initiatives undertaken uh, by them, um, you know, I wish IDEA all the best for their future endeavors, um, and uh, you know all the things they are doing to ensure that you know the laws uh, serve the larger public interest. Um, you know, uh, for Shamnath, he was a brother. Um, I knew him for uh, 20 years. Um, you know, right when he was at Anand and Anand. Um, I was uh, in um, 10th grade uh, at, the, at the time when he joined. Um, and I remember, you know, at that time, I, I didn't have any idea what I was going to do, you know, whether to be a lawyer or not. But I would often visit office. Um, and at the time, the office was in Gurgaon. So he actually taught me, uh, you know, a couple of uh, subjects like contract law and tort law uh, at that time. Um, I remember we used to go to the gym. Uh, together, um, didn't share the same kind of diversity that Keisha was talking about in terms of women, but um, I remember those times quite vividly. Um, uh, we've had so many interactions over the years, uh, so many conversations, um, and you know, apart from uh, every conversation, I learned something new. It enlightened me in terms of, uh, you know, enriched my knowledge about the subject, uh, intellectual property. But apart from that, you know, each message and each conversation had something more, you know, fundamental, uh, more humanistic, right? Some some uh, humanistic lesson about it uh, underlying that conversation, whether it was, you know, being a better brother, being a better son, uh, being a better friend. Uh, there was always something to take away. Um, you know, I remember seeing uh, Keshav and Amit and Monica and everyone working at Ananda at that time, and there was so much, you know, born homey. Uh, you know, such close friendship, and you know, I miss those times. Um, he gave me a lot of strength. Uh, you know, whenever 
the chips were down. He would always encourage me. Um, you know, he'd always have my back. Um, so I'll miss that in him. Um, uh, you know, his support was uh, unflinching. And of course, everybody knows, you know, what kind of an intellectual giant he was, right? He was, um, uh, I mean, look what he achieved in these 42 years. Uh, you know, some things that I can remember, and of course, these have been extensively written about uh, ad nauseum, but, you know, some things are his being the amicus in the, in the Supreme Court in the Novartis dispute, the writ petitions that he'd filed uh, on the constitutionality of the IPAB, uh, the working requirements uh, in, you know, uh, patent law, uh, the book he'd written on overlapping IP, which I read from page to page uh, with Mr. Neil Wilkoff, um, and of course the DU photocopy case lately, uh, you know, which also kind of reflected the public interest element. So he, you know, he's so deeply cherished. Um, of course, um, you know, he was the most positive person that I've known. You know, very caring, very loving, very compassionate, passionate very magnanimous, um, uh, but the, you know, one special uh, characteristic that I remember was he had so much humility. For a man who knew so much, you know, as you said, he was so articulate, he was intellectually so uh, uh, superior to the others, but the humility with which he carried himself, uh, I think sets him apart. Um, you know, he, uh, he had the ability you know, this uh, to kind of forge relationships and bonds with everybody, you know, whether it was a, you know, very big legal luminary, uh, you know, a politician, judge, um, uh, to, you know, to ordinary people. Like, I remember when he'd come, he'd often stay with me when he was in Delhi. He'd come into the house and he'd say, uh, Dubi, my brother, that's my pet name, right? And um, he'd go straight away to uh, the kitchen and, you know, hug the chef and have a conversation with him for 10 minutes. So everybody found a friend in him, um, and that's, uh, you know, what uh, I remember in him. Um, uh, I know that he's happy where he is. I'll miss him deeply. Uh, I love him, um, and I, I hope uh, his soul rests in peace. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Anand. Um, our next speaker is Mr. Nehas Bashir, um, Shamnath's brother. Good evening, everyone. I think, uh, so basically there are three of, sorry. Yeah. So I'm the youngest of three brothers and well, I mean, all of the experience from parenting probably came from two of us brats. Uh, he was the only parent, I mean, only active parent that both of us knew. Uh, and till I had a younger sister, I was the youngest in the family and got all the attention. And sister came along, some of the attention went away. Then Shamnath got really famous, then all the attention went away, like no one's even bothered. I think. I mean, when Shishir asked me to speak for a couple of minutes here, I was not sure what to cover. And then I remembered when I met Justice Rumapal a couple of weeks ago, she had asked, like, you know, I mean, while everyone sees a problem and tries to address the situation, there must be something deeper in Shamnath's life for, you know, for him to do the kind of things he's done to set up something like IDIA, et cetera. So to be honest, I mean, that's something I mean, I, I probably could never speak to him at that level. I mean, we, we're, not at the, we, we, we're not the same age group at all. But like just from, you know, from where, traveling the same path as he has, like we went, went to the same school, I became a lawyer because of him. In fact, my father told me he's not funding anything else. You can go, I, either try to become like Shamnath or fund yourself. <laughs> so what, I mean, we, we all went to a boarding school uh, in Uti, and the school had a fee structure which was co comparatively much, uh, in a, uh, much less expensive in, in comparison to the other boarding schools at the time. 
and the school had a program where all Anglo-Indian kids had free education. So in our school, we had like three, you, you, you could clearly make out three sets of students. One was the super rich kids who their parents couldn't suffer them at home anymore and therefore send them to boarding. Then you had uh, the middle class where parents wanted their kids to have a better life than themselves, send them to boarding. Then we had a bunch of people who could not have afforded this school if not for the scholarship at all. And at least for me personally, it was those kids that made the biggest difference in our lives in trying to better ourselves. Like, they were insanely good at sports. They were very good at, uh, uh, they had ex exceptional success with the opposite sex, which Shamnath also followed in due course. And uh, this is apart from all the studying and everything else we came to school for also. And we, we, we all tried to, you know, emulate them. We, we, all, we all wanted to be friends with them. We wanted to kind of become as popular and as, as good as them at, at school. And I think that's, that is a first-hand experience as far as how much diversity improves you and how much it, I mean, it's, it's not about helping someone else. It's, it's very much about, you know, improving yourself and improving your life. And I think this was something he experienced at a very small age. He was there for almost like 12 years. So that, this is where he went. And I think that kind of was the building block for him. And the only other thing that uh, he always tried to change is the perception of lawyers. He, he, he believed that you know, everyone looked down upon lawyers. I mean, famous thing back at home is all lawyers are liars. So you, know, you keep getting that thrown. My dad is a, uh, I mean, is a qualified lawyer, but he's never, never really practiced. So Shamnath had that thrown in his face a lot. And he really wanted to change the perception. And he always thought that, you know, I mean, these idea sensitization programs, he used to keep telling us that, you know, forget if I get two scholars, three scholars out of these programs. At the bare minimum, I've educated an entire 30 people or 50 people who's come from that school for the sensitization program that law as an option is, 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 is viable and it's something that people should kind of work towards. And I think uh, he believed in the fact that you know, diversity is going to help us out. And two, the law as a profession can be used as a tool for social change. And all of us should, of course, you know, uh, continue and do whatever we can to take it forward. There's not much work left to be done from that perspective, to be honest, because he set up platforms which can self-run. He's, he's, not, he's not asking too much of us. We really need to just be there if it's a funding shortage or if it's a guidance requirement, that, that's all that we are required to do. He said he's done all the hard work. I mean, we, we can read the benefits by just saying that, you know, we helped out also. And I think that's what we should do. And thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank you, Niyas. Um, I'd like to now call upon Mr. Rajiv Luthra, manager Luthra and Luthra. Um, and he's been a great uh, managing partner, sorry. He's been a great supporter of IDIA for a very long time. Uh, sir, could you please speak some words? Uh, good evening. I heard lots of wonderful things and lots of memories came back to me. I've been the, one of the more unfortunate people uh, in this room. I, I didn't spend a lot of time with uh, Shamnath, unfortunately. I got to know him only a few years ago. I think it was Amit who mentioned to me when I went to speak at uh, uh, the, the college at Calcutta. And you had mentioned to me, I must look out for this rock star. And I saw him, looked like a bit of a rock star, but it did not impress me the first glance. When he spoke, uh, I spent more than two hours with him. And for a guy who sells his time without being paid, it means a lot. <laughs> and what Keshav said, what uh, his brother said, what uh, Gotham said, 
I have a story of a lady who got away. <laughs> and uh, Professor uh, Singh, there was a lady with a red sari. <laughs> <laughs> Not the kind who was scaring people, by the way. <laughs> so anyway, uh, long and short of it is that whatever little time I spent with him, and if I totaled it, I was probably maybe 70, 80 hours total over many, many months. Each minute was like a lawyer's bill, hour or part thereof. And what I learned from him was immense about his illness, and we would argue about various ridiculous things like, what's your end game? I would start asking him, then he would ask me that same question back, and then I would tell him my rule, that if I ask you a question, you can't ask me the same question, and that kind of stuff. I'm a bully, basically. And we discussed lots of different philosophies in life and how things went on, and we would go to these long, you know, uh, long story. Suddenly out of the blue, and I also had heard about his powers with uh, the other sex. And I asked him, did anybody ever really impress you? She said, yes, there was a girl. And, um, and uh, Keshav, did you uh, stay in Lashpat Nagar with him somewhere? Or Gurgaon only? Only Gurgaon, not Lashpat Nagar. Okay, so this beauty was in Lashpat Nagar. <laughs> <laughs> So then he told me a little bit about her. He just knew her name and where she had worked then. Me being the 007, found her. <laughs> and we'll tell you no more. So what I learned from him, I'll tell you guys. Um, I used to often read this phrase, don't wait for the storm to pass, learn to dance in the rain. When he, 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 and I was, you know, unfortunately, or whatever, for these things also fortunate, I had many, many surgeries and lots of other problems I had in life because, you know, I believe if you do bad deeds, bad things will happen to you. Luckily, my slate is clean now. So I knew many doctors at Mayo and elsewhere, and I insisted on getting all his reports and getting him looked at. When he sent me his reports, and I happened to be in Germany at that time. He finally mailed them to me. This is uh, uh, July, I think. You know, yeah, July. No, a little bit before, June. It was in June, end June. When I read those reports, I promise you guys, I actually had tears in my eyes. I said, how is this guy even living? I mean, I don't want to go into the details. That really taught me, forget about the storm to pass learn to dance in the rain. And that is what this guy did. And he left every mountain he climbed. We discussed many things, many successes, some failures, but he left those mountains breathless. Shamnath, my friend, leave this one breathless too. Thank you. Next we have uh, Ms. Madhurima Mukherjee. Um, please, ma'am, could you say a few words? Thanks. I think we've all already had quite a long evening. Um, but uh, I happen to be in National Law School with Shamnad. Um, you know, he was Gautam's classmate. And uh, one of the things I have to tell you, because I'm the only woman speaker, is that I never made the Shamnad Bashir list. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> And, and uh, privately, I'll tell you more about that. But I made the Gautam Saha list, but not the Shamnath Bashir list. So let's say uh, Gautam Saha was the poor man, Shamnath Bashir, <laughs> a poor woman's. Um, of all the occasions that I've been called upon to speak at, um, I don't think uh, many, many of us, or any of us who spoke today, uh, could have ever imagined that we would be uh, called upon to speak in this occasion. Um, so pardon me if I, if um, you know, honestly break down. Uh, I think a lot of us still believe this is some sort of cruel prank and um, some sort of shamnad trick. And, uh, 
And what I'm going to do is, um, I'm, I'm like Gautam, going to just read out from a tribute I wrote on Facebook for Shamnath because it's difficult to talk about him otherwise. So, as a Bengali, you uh, read many Tagore stories in school, and one particularly touched me. Uh, it's about the small, beautiful boy who turns up at a zamindar's house. He's a vagabond. No one knows who he is or where he came from. The zamindar has one daughter and no son. The boy loves nature and he roams around very freely. In those days, in the 1800s, the zamindar gets him an English education. His wife loves this child as her own. He's the smartest boy that anyone has ever seen. Uh, everybody loves their love, affection on him. And the zamindar decides that this boy is going to be the boy who's going to marry my daughter. But inexplicably at the night of the wedding, completely without any explanation, this boy escapes every joy bond and luxury given to him freely and runs away to help a poor traveling theater never to be seen again. For many years, I actually never understood this boy. If he had so much worldly pleasure that we all crave so much and we work towards, riches that everyone can dream of and so much love, why would he run away? Why was he such a rascal and so ungrateful? Now I think a lot of us realize in our grand old age that some people are not meant for the confines of the narrow walls that we restrict ourselves. Maybe what Tagore described in this boy was an indomitable spirit. That is for everyone and not for anyone. As we all know, Shimna disappeared very often. As a matter of fact, when I heard that he was not to be found for many days, I wasn't surprised. When I called Shishir, I was like, you know, Shamnad's doing a Shamnad. Uh, then he turned up, like I think Dhruv said and Keshav said. He turned up here and there and everywhere. His emails came sporadically. He unexpectedly dropped by with generous gifts. My 10-year-old daughter reminded me yesterday that the last thing he, she got from him was Kashmiri chocolates. We didn't even know there were chocolates made in Kashmir. Um, he had that loud laughter that would fill our, our homes and ring through our halls. And sometimes his rascal-like ways became apparent. Think about it. He had. Greek god looks, he had a razor-sharp mind, and he had a heart of gold. How could so much come together in one man? It was almost unfair, and we are obviously mere mortals. Obviously, we loved him. People who really knew him, and there have been many before me, knew that he was never really with anyone, and then again, he was with everyone. And while he was there as a scholar, Professor Singh has spoken about that, a lawyer, a friend, I'm sure a brother, a guru, a mentor, he was completely there. We know about that, the passion, the discussions, 150% there. The tributes, all the thanks we've heard, the testimonies are obviously, you know, testimonial to that. He sort of cast a spell on all of us, passionately talking about diversity. I didn't even really think about diversity. I was a corporate lawyer all my life. You know, I didn't really think about di diversity till Shamnath started talking about it. And then we were like, yeah, of course, you know, this makes sense. Mesmerizing us with obviously his intellectual prowess. You know, and obviously every one of us were convinced by what he was convinced by. And this, as we all know, in the same breath of drinking, 
Gautam's expensive whiskey or taking out some tea which definitely looked suspicious. <laughs> so, so in that shitty backpack of his that he would carry around everywhere. I think, I think the most important thing that the legacy that he's left for us is, is that, you know, he was a big picture man. He imagined IDI. I had the good fortune of working with Shishir and him fairly closely between my two law firm jobs. And, and you know, the, the sort of passion he had about IDI, the big picture. But as some people said, it's, it's the devil is in the detail and the detailing that he went into. So why would he think of social mentors for IDI? Because a lot of us who went to national law schools, we know that it's very, very difficult for certain bag kids coming from certain backgrounds to come into IDI and really blend in to that atmosphere. Maybe Nehasi he learned from your school life that it is tough for certain people to blend in. And the sort of you know, thoughts that he had, he actually, somebody said, I think Keshav mentioned, the sort of time he spent with children. He said to me very distinctly, you know, these family structures, these traditional family structures are not for me. You know, but he was not a father. But the sort of detailing he got in with what to do with IDI and the mentoring of the students, it's, it's remarkable for someone who's really not a father, but we talked about fiction that IDI students should be reading. You know, we, Amit and I yesterday were discussing what is it that IDI students really need? Do, do they need our money? Some of us can afford to give it, some of us can't. But what is it that they really need? They just sometimes need a person to talk to. Think about the time we spend with our own kids. Think about the times our parents have taught us how to write exams. Some of these kids come from places where nobody talks to them about how to, I mean, forget about attempting a law school ed exam. They don't know how to dress, they don't know how to speak, they don't know what is the appropriate thing to say. You know, yesterday Amit was in my house, I told my son, say hello to Amit uncle. Nobody teaches them these things. And Shamnath knew. Shamnath thought about, not we all know, but Shamnath thought about these things. Last but not the least, I think all of us have spoken a lot. You know, in my age, I think I'm becoming more and more spiritual. And Sometimes when I think about the way Shamnad went, I just think not everybody, like maybe in Tagore's story, not everybody is really made for this world. So I think we should walk away from this evening feeling that maybe somebody like Shamnad was on this earth to pay off his karmic debt. And it was done. And he was gone. And he went on his own terms and condition. He didn't go, like Mr. Luthra said, somebody breathing down his neck in a hospital room, you know, all of us fussing over him, Shishi taking his reports repeatedly to various doctors. Shab Amit had many funny stories about the doctors also. You know, he didn't want that. Maybe one way to think about this is that he didn't want that. Shamnath being who he was, he went like Shamnath. He went on his own terms and conditions. And as I said in my post, all of us, you know, grief is very personal. All of us will grieve in our own way, in our own time. But I think the, the way to, at least I reconcile myself to thinking about Shamnath is that he has escaped on his own terms and condition, and definitely not ours. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Mukherjee. Our next speaker is Mr. Gopal Shankar Narayan, um, senior advocate at the Supreme Court and one of Shamnad's oldest friends. Uh, 
like Modu just said, we have dragged this evening on. Um, just a few general thoughts, nothing very specific. Um, I think it's always difficult when, at, on occasions like this, to not praise someone. Uh, it's always expected. And uh, when you have spent your entire lifetime not praising him to his face, uh, to suddenly start praising him now seems dishonest, almost. Um, Shamnad and I uh, are similar personalities in a way. I mean, he had the intelligence, the good looks, the honesty. Uh, I had everything else. Um, I used to have these roaring fights with him because he was an expert on everything. So was I. And 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 um, uh, there's there's this. It's it's called the Kruger effect, uh, where the less you know, the more confident you are about yourself. And as you learn more and more, your confidence starts reducing. And um, he used to trigger that uh, in me every time we spoke. Uh, you know, I was this constitutional lawyer, I was a litigator. He was sitting in some uh, foggy little classroom trying to teach kids something. And he would call me up. And he would talk to me about the very case that I had been killing myself for two weeks on and find about six points which I hadn't found and he would try and poke holes in everything uh, I had said or was planning to say and it was incredibly successful because uh, I think his, his constant uh, mate was logic and I think that does underlie uh, law and arguments and everything else we do. And uh, almost every time I would think to myself, damn it, why didn't I think of this? Because he would have thought of almost every angle, he would have covered every bit of it in areas which I thought um, I had spent quite some time learning and knowing and stuff like that. So, um, and, and I used to wonder how it was that um, this chap who had spent so much time, you know, st uh, teaching intellectual property, knew everything about... Um, uh, constitutional law, about civil procedure, about uh, fabrics that uh, go into saris, that, uh, you know, virtually everything, uh, rocket science, uh, different types of philosophy. Uh, uh, my wife uh, is, is a big uh, believer in, in afterlife and stuff like that. And he would engage with her endlessly, nauseatingly endlessly on, on the afterlife and uh, stuff that comes you know, multiple births and uh, Brian, uh, that guy who wrote the book and stuff. Um, and he had this kind of uh, encyclopedic knowledge about virtually everything. And it was scary because, you know, with my uh, petty little narrow-mindedness, I would think, hey, this guy would be good in a quiz. Why don't I take, get him a, as, as a teammate? And these are not things that ever entered his mind. It never, ever entered his mind that he could use this knowledge for personal profit. That was never at all a criteria for him. Um, and, and, I, and I used to think, this guy never quizzed in law school. Why not? And you know, it's such a ridiculous, stupid, small-minded way of thinking of things. Uh, Shamnad, every time I met him personally, or any, any of us met him, I think he held a mirror up to us. I think a lot of what all of you have touched upon before on how we use, we could uh, feel better about ourselves. Our consciences were uh, in some way assuaged by helping with IDIA or whatever Shamnath's new project was. Um, I think to a large extent, he held a, a mirror up to today's society where it's important to be known, to be seen, um, to always let people know what your work is and how well you're doing it. You know, I hear about Facebook posts. I was so proud that I was recognized, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. And, and Shamnath was so far and away, away from that. Uh, he had re reached a kind of uh, spiritual uh, space where that kind of recognition was irrelevant unless it was going to help any of his projects. So with the Infosys Award and uh, the, the uh, money that came with it, he knew he could help his project and that was great for him. Um, the other thing I think Professor Singh touched upon this earlier on, on your criticism of uh, the 377, NAS Foundation judgment, etc. I found it uncanny how like some kind of CD bottom dweller, he would somehow keep himself plugged into everything that was happening around him in the community, in the world. Um, so I remember it was that the privacy judgment, nine judges, and we were on the second day of arguments and somebody had tweeted out that Justice Chandrachud, this was in 2017, 
Justice Chandrachud had uh, just made a mention while arguments was on that, look, when you're talking about privacy and right to uh, life, etc., wouldn't sexual choice come into it? And this was just a bad tweet. People had barely noticed it. This guy had noticed it. Um, so he called me that evening. And then it usually starts with some fraternal abuses in Malayalam. And then he gets on to um, sharing this tweet and this information he'd got. So I said, okay, so why are you calling me about this? What's it got to do with me? So he said, no, no, aren't you there in the case? I said, yeah, but there are 25 lawyers in it. So he said, no, tell me, uh, Professor Singh had once mentioned that uh, this 377 issue, there are lots of obstacles that uh, are there in its way uh, with larger benches, etc. So I said, yes, you unwittingly helped him in this. Um, so he said, uh, now you're before nine judges. I said, so? He said, so this, this judge has said sexual choice should be a part of Article 21. Um, shouldn't that be argued? Shouldn't somebody say it? So I said, look, I'm somewhere in the middle on this issue because we were arguing privacy, actually. So I said, if you want, I can drag it in at some point. So I did drag it in about three weeks later when we were in the middle of arguments. And I didn't think more of it. I mean, I just mentioned Naj from blah, blah, blah. And eventually when the judgment came out, uh, overwhelmingly, like seven judges, um, all of them had put their minds to this and agreed that sexual choice is a part of Article 21. Therefore, pretty much foreclosing that argument for everything. And this is not something many people know about Chamnat because this is actually a personal conversation with me. Uh, I was merely an instrument for putting it across. Um, and and shocking, and this is, this is the amazing thing because I think he is the guy who ensured that the Supreme Court of India um, uh, put the nail in the coffin for homosexuality. The other judgment that came later just followed this uh, when all the obstacles were taken out of the way. Um, but the shocking bit, and this is so typical of Shamnath, he wrote about this on the Spicy IP blog in October, uh, claiming somehow to give me credit for this, right? Because he wanted people to talk about this issue more because he knew that at some point this was going to happen. It's going to become an issue that people are going to argue and specifically deal with. And, and he put a blog out. So I called him up that evening and I said, what is wrong with you? Why would you uh, mention me and make it seem that I had uh, anyway tangentially tried to come to it? He said, Ada, it doesn't matter. It's just something that we need to put out. Yeah? We need to work together. We need to ensure that they, we get rid of this disgusting habit of treating them separately, etc., etc." And I think that was amazing about him. He'd never bothered about credit. And this was where credit was due. I mean, this is a huge issue. I mean, we have seen in uh, previous months how many people have been up in arms about the credit being taken for issues like this. And that lay at Shamnath's door. Um, and I'm sorry that I we had never discussed this when he was around or made it public when he was around because I felt, you know, he didn't care about it. It didn't matter at all to him. And uh, it seemed... Uh, really, really cloyingly inappropriate for an advocate who's appeared in the case to start talking about it and start giving him the credit for it. It seems like some way of taking it myself. It had nothing to do with me. It was never an original part of my arguments or anything. It completely was his. And I felt it appropriate for me to mention this in light of the obstacle you mentioned because his idea was to dismantle that. And I think in many ways he dismantled many, many obstacles that all of us had and continue to have. Um, I don't think any of us, uh, I, know, I know many, many people here talked about this, about feeling guilty in their own lives, I think, um, about about how we are not doing enough for the community and stuff. And, and we are here talking about a chap who, who did so much for so many people. I think he had arrived at the kind of uh, reality about himself as a human being, which we all must, I think, at some point begin to embrace about how limited we are as human beings and what we can do um, for those around us. Shamnath did it for the much larger community and at some point when we were talking about family and marriage and stuff like that and I asked him, it's one of my favorite hobbies to try and set up people. <laughs> so I asked him, uh, I mentioned some girl and I said, and uh, I said, wouldn't you like to have kids at some point and all? And he said in Malayalam to me, uh, you know, he, he, that aren't all these idea kids, uh, my kids. Um, for him, the world was his family. So he took care of everybody around. And if there's one message we can take away from Shamnath's life, it's that we don't have to make the world our community. We just have to make our community better and happier the way Shamnath made all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Narayan. Um, I would now like to call upon Mr. Shishirudrappa, uh, trustee at IDIA, to say a few words. You know, Shamnad was somebody like, for me, 
normally people try to pretend to be successful or sometimes pretend to sort of, uh, but for me, Shamnad, who was somebody that I could be just who I am, if I've had a good day or a bad day, I could just be this, he was my closest friend uh, who I could be who I was. I didn't know Shamnad in uh, law school, although we overlapped for a year. Uh, I was on a plane from Delhi to Bangalore once and Shamnath was in a ponytail and a suit. I thought I knew, knew this guy, but his boarding pass said Praveen Anand. <laughs> so I said, you know, how do you call Praveen Anand Shamnath, right? <coughs> so I just kept quiet and I s sat next to him and he said, hey, I'm a law professor, what do you do? I said, Shamnath? He said, yeah. I said, why does it say Praveen Anand? So, you know, he had a long story for that. <laughs> so, um, so we spent that plane ride and the full day uh, speaking about law schools, uh, life in law school, uh, diversity, uh, because later he went on to uh, the Leela Palace and wanted to take up Praveen Anand's room. So, uh, <laughs> so I ended up spending the whole day with him. Uh, our friendship really grew on uh, idea. Um, so the, <clears throat> there are so many, there, there's so many things I want to say, but I'll, I'll be very quick. Uh, the day he left for Chikmagalur, we've had the, on July 27th, we had the biggest fight between me and Shamnath. Uh, you know, we always argued about, uh, about his health and his choices of health. He went to the US to meet some Baba and not some doctors there. Uh, he, he weighed 41 kilos when he left uh, uh, Chikmagalur. You know, all these years of me knowing him, every time he used to send me a text saying, Shishir, urgent, call me back. I used to always be worried saying something's happened to him. But invariably it used to be that, you know, Shishir, this caller needs this favor. We need to set up, set up another donor for this, for this caller. It was never about him. So therefore, on August 5th, when I actually sent him a message saying, Shamnad, urgent, call me back. Uh, Baga never returned my message. Uh, something that I will always hold him uh, to that. Uh, uh, you know, idea needed him. You know, most of us needed him. It was, I think, too early for him to, uh, to, to go. Uh, so most of you would be worried as to, you know, um, or most of you would have questions about uh, what's the future of idea? Uh, Shamnath was the face of idea and also the force behind idea. But I think the last nine years we've, we've set up processes and built a community of supporters like all of you uh, so that idea can sustain. Uh, you know, uh, the, I, the, all the idea employees that Shamnath personally recruited have stood up for this last month and Shamnath would be very, very, very proud to see that. Uh, one thing that IDEA has not publicized is the lives it has touched. And this is the, num I mean, most people would look, focus on how many scholars have you recruited, how many scholars have you, uh, you know, have gotten to law school. Uh, but here is the number that really matters. That's 36,000 plus. That's the number of people that we have sensitized, trained in the last nine years. Uh, this is the, you know, this is a very conservative number. Uh, and these 36,000 students have come from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, Mizoram to Gujarat. Uh, the, in fact, in 2014-15, we, uh, we were conducting a sensitization and a training program, and there was shelling going on in Jammu Kashmir, and people could hear that shelling. And Shamnath insisted that Somehow we should find this one scholar who had to be trained there. Uh, that, that was Shamnath's com uh, commitment to idea. Uh, that's what in, in inspired all of us uh, to be with him. Uh, he, you know, here are just two stories that, that sort of you know, gives the impact of uh, idea. In 2010, we had trained a woodcutter's daughter for, for, for English logical reasoning so that she can crack the uh, law school exam. She didn't crack the law school exam, so some of we forgot about it. But she used the training in English, logical reasoning, and math to do a media training. So she did media training and for five years, and she, 
so the day shamnath passed away and the news broke she called me to thank saying you know thanks to for that training i got into a media training institute from there i've got a job i'm leaving to london today to join bbc's uh, uh, i think i think the media institute that helps bbc uh, so our far reaching effect of idea was not just 123 scholars that are in law school or have graduated from law school but are these th are these several thousand people who are doing ba english you know ba journalism be it you know everybody said about shamnath's random act of kindness i just have one story uh, two years ago there was there was a building complex in calcutta a poor building complex which was being demolished so shamnath had filed a pil and had this building complex demolition stopped but there was one house that actually you know in the beginning of the demolition they lost the house uh, old couple 85 year old couple uh, but so i didn't know about it uh, and shamnad all these years has been sending money to this old couple from his own pocket so after burying shamnad while we were driving back i asked arnab saying hey uh, arnab we should tell this old man that Sh shamnad has passed away he said sir don't do that the old man will die so i said okay and we kept quiet in 5 minutes uh, arnab got a call the old man had passed away he was buried on the same day shamnad was buried uh, you know shamnad never felt idea was his alone he fe always felt he he was just a custodian of idea uh, you know idea will reach out to all of you do whatever you can whether you, whether you can connect us to your clients to raise csr money do you want to mentor some idea scholars or just pass on the word of what good things idea is doing each bit helps uh, one last you know message so i happened to go through his financial records because i you know just living with me uh, he didn't take anything for him or his family the, he just has doled it out to everybody who's touched his life so the whole infosys prize that came up is 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 he's gone to scholars he's he's returned it to several people several students that's the real shamnath uh, you know if we can inculcate i think 10% of it i think we would be really really good human beings thank you okay. um thank you shishir um for all of us who knew shamnath uh, we knew how passionate he was about idia uh, most of us have spoken about it have discussed it and year after year idea is, has been working tirelessly to sensitize as many students as possible about law as a career option we do have some pledge forms and brochures at our registration desk and we'd request you to check them out um and this i think is the perfect time to have some of the idea is scholars share their experiences about shamnath um first i'd like to call upon yugendra yadav he's a former idea is scholar and he's now working as a litigator in his native place in jharkhand good evening everybody uh, myself yogendra yadav uh, second batch idia scholar uh, graduated from mineli urachi uh, in 17 and now i'm litigating at uh, jharkhand high court uh, my first interaction with samnath sir uh, when i finished my first semester in law school and i had to come to samnath sir basically asked me to come to calcutta uh, for my first internship so one of uh, idia volunteer escorted me at the evening of 8 o'clock or uh, in between some time and uh, to his chamber and when the door opened a young man uh, he was working on laptop sitting uh, just in front of me on desk uh, so initially i thought some a uh, student of the university might be sitting in but uh, later on the volunteer asked me is the professor samnath basir before that i never met him and he was so young so charming so energetic i can't believe that is professor looking sim uh, at that time coming from hindi belt uh, my english was very poor very very poor so i was not comfortable with talking with him i was very uncomfortable so he just uh, gave me a felt me a glass of water gave me and he just said me just sit and relax 
And though his Hindi was not very good, he started trying to uh, talk in Hindi with me to just make me comfortable. And in, during that, that, that interaction was of around 30 minutes. And within that 30 minutes, uh, uh, Professor Samnath uh, and uh, I developed a kind of bond that it, uh, it's still like uh, I can feel uh, uh, from that day, he was like my everything, like a friend, a brother, a teacher, a mentor, uh, apart from, uh, except from my, uh, he was not just for me a physical parent. So from that day, uh, whenever I need some kind of uh, uh, help or uh, any guidance, any kind of, before talking to my parents, I used to call him. Uh, during my uh, law college, uh, studying law, I developed my interest in politics. And uh, one day after finishing my uh, law school, uh, I went to Shamla sir and uh, I said, sir, uh, I want to fight this parliamentary election from my home constituency. So he just said, me, are you sure? And without giving a second thought, he just uh, dialed up to Sister Sir and said, Ki, I'm not uh, very expert in politics, and you just go to uh, meet Sister Sir. And he immediately sent me that day, within a few minutes, he sent me to Sister Sir. I met him, and uh, he asked me a lot of questions about politics, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so Samna Sir was like person, uh, actually, he empowered me uh, so much. He boosted my uh, confidence so much that even I, uh, coming from a BPL family, uh, uh, used to work as a domestic help, used to sell a new, uh, as a uh, uh, newspaper. I uh, dreamed of, I dared of uh, fighting a parliamentary election, and I did it. I, though the result was another thing, but I did it. So this is the Samnath Basir. I'm standing here speaking to you just because Samnath is here. And I don't have much words. I have a lot of words, but I can't speak too much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yogendra. Um, last but not the least, we have a current fifth year IDIA scholar, Bhavna, with us. She's studying at IPU uh, University, Delhi. And she'd like to say a few words. Good evening, everyone. I am Bhavna Singh, an idea scholar and a law student. I have a lot of nice, fond memories of him locked away in my secret treasure chest. And today, I'll be sharing a few of those memories with you. About a year ago, when I was really frustrated and struggling with my own emotions, I wrote a mail to Sir. The content of the ma that mail are not important. The reply I received from was only a six to seven lines, but those lines meant the whole world to me. Those lines are my treasure. I read them when I, whenever I feel down, broken, or shattered. I read them when I feel like crying. I read them when nothing in the world makes absolutely any sense, and I feel better almost instantan instantaneously. If Shamna Sh Bashir, wo, if Shamna sir was moonlighting as a superhero. This would have been his superpower to make you feel whole, to make you feel complete, to cheer you up and fill your heart with hope and optimism in just a matter of seconds, no matter how devastated you were. One December, at a conference I attended during, I attended, during my break, everyone was talking and getting to know each other when suddenly a loud yet sweet voice called me by my name. It said, Bhavna, Bhavna, come here. I want you to meet them. I promptly lef left ev whatever I was doing and I ran towards that voice. He introduced me as one of his best and brightest scholars. And I remember how proud and shy I felt at the same time. I still have 
that voice in my mind because that was just a that was not just a voice but an ocean of love that's another one of my hidden treasure treasures when at the another time i was attending an idi conference everyone was having food if i say better tasty food and i saw him munching on some salted broccoli it it reminded me of a tree giving every everybody whatever he had and in in return asking for nothing just a uh, a little water sunshine and a little space on earth and i thought to myself whoever says god don't need energy to sustain themselves they were all wrong that's just how he was that's just how he was he never once cared about himself but always but only all about the people he was surrounded with on one occasion he said to all the idea scholars you all just study don't even think about expenditure because for that i am always here for all the elements in his life he had one broad spectrum antibiotic hakuna matata hakuna matata is a swahili word which translate to no worries that's how wanted that's how he wanted us to live without any fear without any worries without caring about how the world is going to perceive you and just giving it all you got all your heart and all your soul i cannot even begin to explain how much i miss sir shamnath bashir was not just a visionary he was a god who looked at the awe excitement and optimism of a child he taught us how to love everyone unconditionally i love you and i miss you sir thank you Mm, a very warm thank you to all the speakers for sharing such interesting stories about Shamnath. Uh, they really have provided us with much solace. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, all of us at the IDIA family will continue to keep counting on your relentless support in this time of need and grief to take the legacy of Shamnath forward. Thank you all.